They'll, dom good. they'll dominate it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Carl, if you want to get um, explain you know the way string theory works. Well, of course, this is Andrew's presentation. I got nothing. No, <coughs> this is Andrew's presentation, but uh, just the basics on what string theory is and uh, why it can be related to paranormal studies. It is theorized, that, uh, the popular quantum science is that the mo most minute thing in existence is a particle. You get smaller and smaller and smaller, finally you get to a very essential part particle. It could be even uh, subatomic. You know, there are the protons and neutrons that circle around the nucleus of an atom. Maybe a particle even smaller, then you get into citrons, spelled with a P. But uh, a theory emerged, it started being worked on in the 1950s and was developed in the early 1970s, that there, at the essence of all existence, all physical existence, it even pushes the limit of how you describe physical existence, is uh, a strand of pure energy. Some of these strands are closed, some of them are open-ended, and they are composed of energy, and these are the strings. They are indescribably minute. I mean, I just, I can't, there are only so many concepts our minds can comprehend. Uh, but it has been illustrated as a string of energy. The, the smallest strings are, um, let's see, what the, uh, the nucleus of an atom, let's say it uses the atom, the atom, the whole atom, because it looks like a little solar system. Okay. The atom in comparison to the size of our solar system with all the planets. Uh, Compare that to a string, the string would be that much smaller than the atom. So the atom to the string is like a solar system, comparing that to the atom and our solar system. So that just is, is something I can't conceive of. When I first heard it, I said, whoa, 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 I don't want any money. <laughs> I, can't, I can't conceptualize that. It can't, it can't be. But that's what they think, and that's why they're theory. That's why we can't detect them. But these theorized strands have interesting properties. They resonate or vibrate, and that is responsibly. So if one string vibrates at, uh, well, an incredibly far distance for a string, say at one corner of the Earth, that can resonate with another string on the other side of our planet, or that may even be universal. That uh, Strings far, far away can influence strings close by. But as far as our containment, our planet, that would do much to explain the phenomena of synchronicity, why coincidences happen. They seem to do more than coincidences, like events attracting each other. Examples being the, the Kennedy Lincoln assassinations. And I'm sure you've had coincidences in your own life that are sometimes just uncanny. You know, your <coughs> temperature gauge in your car reached 32, and you turn on the, the radio, and they, they say 32, you know, number 32 on our countdown. I've had that happen. Usually when I have a job that works with numbers, a lot of coincidences. Some of them are just going to come up. Some of them are uncanny. Why have my girlfriends always looked alike? I don't know, but it's not my fault. But I had a young lady tell me that, you know, like, they all look like me. I said, no, they, yeah, I guess. But, but I didn't plan it that way. They all found me. So, uh, but when I had a job at, at, uh, at a dental agency, I was working with numbers a lot. And, well, to use that 32, it, uh, I did have that happen. They said it's 32, you know, degrees outside the radio announced. It's currently 32, and the number I was jotting down right then was 32, 32, uh, the last four digits. Sometimes those things are just going to be coincidence. Sometimes they're going to happen. But when they happen in sequence, especially if they seem relevant, then you wonder if there's some other force at work, something behind the scenes, pulling the strings. That's why string theory could apply to this. String theory could explain a lot. String theory could actually provide a unified field theory for paranormal phenomena. You know, why do strange things happen when we've got this logical world that we're supposed to have figured out? Why do the strange things happen? Why do you know, people see ghosts when they're not supposed to be there? Why are there these bizarre coincidences? Uh, how do cryptoids, you know, cryptozoology, how do these these strange creatures like Bigfoot, uh, how do they appear and suddenly the tracks stop and we don't find carcasses of them? Maybe they transport themselves between dimensions. So <coughs> string theory allows for all kinds of speculation, all avenues of, of guesswork, and that's why it's fun. Because 
it can go far as to explaining why things aren't all that we comprehend. Why do these strange things happen? Well, the existence of other dimensions and portals between other dimensions, in other words, other worlds. String theory ties into that. So did you want to take it, or did I just spoil your whole lecture? Oh, no, did, I, did I give the end away? And yeah, you know what, we're done. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to have a 90 minute question and answer session. That's right. Okay. Now you see why I bring them along, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so basically, I mean, the, the way I, I, I work this is we, you know, we're going to take two popular, um, two popular theories, two popular conceptions, and see if we can turn them on their heads a little bit, because it's kind of fun to do. So we'll start off. That's why I like writing stuff. And that's why string theory is fun, because you that's can go right. off and running with it. Because it's so speculation, it's not proven, so. That's right. Actually, I'll change this to, sorry for the chicken scratch. These two words, they're kind of synonymous. What do you think of when you see these words? Like, how would you describe those? Wispy. Wispy. A ghost or an apparition, like what's the what would the, the traditional belief of what is that? You know, when, when you see something like that, what is it? What do most people think it is? Ectoplasm. Okay. A vision. A vision. <laughs> Hallucination. Good LSD. <laughs> <laughs> um, energy. energy. Yep. Anything else? Discorporate souls. You know, people who haven't moved on. A lot of people say, you know. Um, Apparition is usually the appearance of, of, a, of a person or an animal, some sort of being that you know people traditionally tend to think might be trapped or on this plane, or you know they did, they're here because they don't want to go somewhere, or they're not ready to go. Um, basically, <clears throat> what Carl's talking about with the string theory is when you have string, when you have these strands of energy and they can vibrate, they resonate on specific frequencies. Everything has a frequency. And what we're talking about is when you have a string, and I always think, I'm a musician, so I always think guitar strings, because they're all on different notes, and you have a string, say on an A note, it vibrates at 440 beats per second. Um, when you hit a guitar string, and you hold it next to another something that, ha that is actually on that frequency, or we'll even use tuning forks. If you hit an A note tuning fork, 440 beats per second, and you hold it next to an, another A note tuning fork, it's going to activate that tuning fork. And it starts to vibrate. And it starts to, it, it starts a chain reaction. So basically, the way we look at certain things when it comes to string theory is when things start to vibrate, when you start to get that frequency, a lot of times these apparitions that you might be seeing, well actually, let me go back a quick second here. It, with the string theorists, they, we have three dimensions that we see every day. Obviously there's two of them right here and we're in the third one, so to speak. In string theory, there's actually believed to be what, up to 11, 11 dimensions. 11 theorized. How they come to that conclusion. I heard basically how they get to 11. But that's where all the equations come in. It. <laughs> that's where the math comes in. And yeah. We're going to skip the math because it gets really heady. But uh, they, they theorize that there are up to 11 dimensions. And the way that they look at these, there's actually, a, I wish I had a copy of it, they have a a picture, there's a diagram of how they perceive these dimensions to be and they're all overlapping and intertwining and you almost think of it as like being in an apartment building. And you're in your own little apartment, you're in your own little box in this one building, you've got neighbors to your left, to your right, above you, below you, and across the hall. You can hear them, you can see them, um, you hear their music, you hear their footsteps, their voices, their fights, their doors slamming, everything else. So you have the same possibility with your string theory. So the, when, the, when the strings start to vibrate, sometimes it may carry over something from another dimension. Now that the possibility of the theory is that in each dimension, good morning, in each dimension, the theory is that there is also very possibly a version of ourselves in each dimension. We're not just in the third dimension, we are in all dimensions. And if you think about, again, going to a guitar string, when you think of a guitar string and you see it, you visualize it at rest, you see the one string. If you are to pluck the guitar string or, or activate it, give it some sort of energy, excite it, so to speak, it will start to vibrate and then you suddenly see many guitar strings, not just the one when you're looking at it visually. And it kind of shows you the, the possible gateway, the doorway 
to the multiple dimensions that you could be in. Everybody following me so far? Can you take this chair? Yeah. So, that's right. So, when you're thinking about. No problem. Oh, no, I'm in the way.